for, for plebs, by plebs, dropping the Bitcoin only signal. Pleb underground. Welcome everyone to the Pleb Underground. Pleb Underground, episode 106. Parasites in the midst. They want to inhabit us. Sociopaths among us. Manipulation their habitus. These narcissists keep count and slide like an abacus. We unmask their account. They lied analogous. Independence edited in America by Benjamin. Forget the bills. This buffalo soldier, Bin Jamin. I bounce like Bob, but I always be in Hammin. If I had a dollar a show, I'd have a Ben Jamin. They make you change your words like a spell check flag. I'm always undeterred, not unwell. Bet gags for their opponent. Fresh hell. Rip bags you ain't flying with. Extra keck tag. Sometimes reality is different to what the mob paints. The great undernourished, each one faints out of relevance. No hieroglyphic ain'ts, unholier than thou, peasants, church of Saturday saints. I tell myself, don't stop believing, it's all about the journey. 58k, gang, soon defeated, each one out on a gurney. Not even a witness at the Hague for their attorney. 58k, gang price, cap cartel, I say that them burn be. I'm from London, approved money laundering capital, city, no joke, approved honey, laundering capital, accrued, shitcoiner, snooze funny, laundering cap, italic letters, fishy money, red herring capital, understand scarcity, it's needed for your soul, not 100 million notches, ain't gonna make you whole, she swiped right on me, the king, pin roll, so when I call, they make the roll, a few more sats is what I choose, to warm this cold world, how I beat the blues, I'm a king like BB, don't get beat or lose, I only like bitcoin, can't fall for your ruse, this ain't my first rhyme, I'm a seasoned performer This ain't my first time, I just tease, not platform her This ain't my first crime, at ease, still cold but I'm warmer This ain't my first dime, I'm bold, a pro forma My words are precise, I'm always specific Coast to coast, I coast, each event but Pacific Some want to swan about, get rugged, it's terrific These nuts comply, the writing, prolific Man, I love, absolutely, I mean the whole rhyme was awesome Welcome back, by the way, I love the ending The ending is totally fire All right so, in case you guys didn't understand who we have here, we've got fellow Bitcoiner and contributing contributing author to the Pleb Underground and return guest, return guest, DN Comply, DN, thank you very much for joining us on the show. I know it's super late where you are, so we really appreciate your time. And uh, yeah, man, this is going to be awesome. Looking forward to talk about your uh, your article that, uh, that that you just dropped. Hey, I'm I'm just thrilled to have been invited back, and uh, yeah, thanks so much for having having me on. It was great talking to you guys more than a year ago, and uh, glad we could finally do it again. Happy to be here all the way from uh, all the way from Southeast Asia. Crazy, crazy. Yeah, no, it's definitely been a minute since uh, I think it's definitely been over uh, over a year. Anyways, all right, guys. Without further ado, we are gonna move it on over to. The number. Yeah, the numbers, of course, brought to us by Time Chain Stats and Time Chain Calendar. What do the numbers look like this week? For At the time of this recording, the block height is 864,154. The Bitcoin fiat exchange, 62,100. Whoa, whoa, 156, 154. All right, all right. I don't know what the hell's going on here. Anyways, big max, big max per Bitcoin, 12,069. Interesting. Still getting a lot of garbage from McDonald's for your Bitcoin. Total public lightning capacity, 5,271. I don't know, man. It seems that number has gone up, even though lightning is dead. Who knows? Anyways, fastest fee, two sats per V-byte. Moscow <laughs> time, 1608. Yeah, that's right. We're all laughing at the at the runes enjoyers and all that stuff and the ordinal people. Anyways, that's uh yeah, that that that's what's going you on. You say that, Phil. I don't know if I, I do. am laughing at the low no? sats per V byte thing anymore, right? Because because to me, I think we do need scaling solutions if we're looking long term. But the low sats for V byte is is isn't good evidence that we need scaling solutions, right? Like I if it to me that isn't that doesn't show social consensus for for scaling solutions if if block space was continuously full of uh, and especially of of what people call monetary transactions then then maybe like the 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 calls for oh we need covenants we need you know things to happen such that we can do further developments in future to actually enable real real scaling solutions the, the, there is no demand. The, the people don't want it. This is what this says, and I, I 
and it, yeah so i have, i have mixed feelings about this like i i think i think this is the time that people that already are bitcoiners should start running some lightning nodes if they're not already doing so and if they're already running lightning nodes to start opening some more channels because i think you know it's a good 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 fee environment for that sort of thing um and it means that in in future when fees do go up then actually you're able to spend bitcoin uh without having a high fee environment to deal with because you can spend on lightning in a sovereign way mm -hmm. uh I, I I don't understand why why more Bitcoiners don't don't run their own Lightning nodes. Um, I think it's easier than ever to do so. I, I know a few years ago it wasn't, but like I don't think there's any excuse. Yeah. Your thoughts, gentlemen. Yeah, I agree. DN, would you uh, would you like to comment on this first before I go? I uh, the, you know honestly uh, because I travel constantly, uh, I don't have time to like set up the you know my own node and the lightning network and all that it's just it would be over my head to do those things as much as i travel so um you you guys are talking way lower level than i'm able to get to at the moment and i i just hope to turn that around the moment i have some stability in my life and are i'm not living out of a laptop backpack anymore so, so what I'm hearing is, what I'm hearing is, is that we need the rise of the nomadic lightning node. So, and I know that there oh, are some absolutely. people who have been working on. You can run a lightning node on your phone on Zeus. It, there you go. I was, <laughs> you know, where I was going with this, Walton. Hey, <laughs> our buddy Evan Kaludis. Evan Kaludis is the, uh, I'd say, is the the main person who is kind of pushing that, uh, you know, mm. like that development and. Yeah, I, I do see. I, I do think that uh, that we are going to see that. But but going back to this um, th this fee environment, right? What does this tell us? Like, does this tell us that there's just no demand for for block space, right? Is that is that really what that tells us? Because in, in my eyes, right, we clearly uh, not just my eyes, but right, ordinals, runes, that type of stuff. This did not create no, I, any sustainable I, demand for block space. I I, I think what's happened, Phil, you is know, people so. have found. In, in lieu of there being real scaling solutions that are more sovereign, people have found other ways to do it. So people batch transactions from a f from an exchange to them. And when they do that, the exchange is also batching that transaction with, with thousands of other or whatever, you know, yeah. people's transactions. So the, 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 what's the, the footprint on, on the block space, is is smaller already because people are doing it doing these things in in a kind of custodial way or 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 you know or you can do it like through lightning again or like to kind of like be i think a better way of doing this is is is, is to kind of do with lightning withdrawals from an exchange and then if you wanted something on chain then you could you could do so you could close a channel if you really wanted or you could use some sort of swap service to to give yourself a utxo on chain but again you're still batching transactions uh, in a different way and i think um that has trade-offs itself like you know that has some maybe centralized swap service um even if it is kind of you know atomic and it's non-custodial you know whatever it is there is there are already kind of hacks that people are using yeah to to, to do what i think would be better done if developed properly but by doing so, it means that there there are it is a low fee environment, and so therefore, people there there isn't the evidence to say that people actually want this thing. It just, and so we're, we're, it's a yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah. No, and on I, the I, same I front, I... Uh, on the same front, you know the uh, the ETFs are having that effect as well. You know the billions of dollars that have poured into ETFs. You know that right. the, the actual uh, yeah, on... absolutely. Yeah, the on-chain transactions are are totally minimal because everybody's just being batched. If you if you throw you know, uh, uh, you know, I could throw fifty thousand dollars at the FBTC ETF, and you know that's not even resulting in a single on-chain on-chain transaction. It's just part of whatever batch they're handling on their next set of purchases. Yeah, I, I think that that's kind of been one of the biggest sticking points uh, for the ETFs um, in in terms of you know that that whole proof of reserves and what exactly is going on. Right, we all saw the you know the the twelve hour uh, the twelve hour 
you know, warning window that that Coinbase was essentially forced into doing doing uh, due to BlackRock's um, essentially questioning <laughs> questioning the amount of basically Bitcoin the that they said that Coinbase were like being Coinbase and, yeah. and BlackRock said, "Hey, can you prove that you're Coinbase, not Coinbase?" And they said, "Okay, fine." <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're not going to do what we're known to do. All right. Anyways, we're we're gonna, not uh... fractionally reserved by Nanking. We're just Coinbase. No. Oh. Come on, come on. He's you can trust. Hey, we're Brian. Feds like you guys. Everyone can trust Brian. It's okay. All right, let's uh, let's take a look at the uh, the first numbers article here. All right, all right. We got some got some light and fluffy for the uh, for the numbers this week. Here we go. BTC archive. Bitcoin will break 100k this year if it follows the average gains made after a green September candle. Yes, I know, Phil. This could have been hopium. Everything is freaking hopium at this point. All right, so here we go, guys. Let's take a look at some rosy numbers. October, and I'm still waiting for October. <laughs> That's so funny. What happened? What, what are we, October 4th? Yeah, it still hasn't happened. Okay, so October, the pro the uh, the projections, all right, and take a look, right? So, I mean, <laughs> this is from October 1st. So 80,518. Sure, I'd love to see that in the next three weeks. Why not? Uh, November, 89,727. December, 106 thousand seven hundred and eighteen and if those numbers if those numbers don't make you happy enough dn comply this will go back to your point about the shenanigans at the etfs blackrock and fidelity etfs are in the top 10 etfs launched in the last decade by total assets guys i bid 23.2 billion fbtc 11 billion okay so to your point, you know, what exactly, what exactly is going on? If, if we're talking about, you know, if we're talking about these numbers, right, where we're looking at like $33.2 billion and Bitcoin's essentially sitting at the same place it was four years ago, sorry, three and a half years ago. I don't know. I don't know how I and feel so, about this. In, a, in inflation adjusted as well, like. Right. So we're and not to be right, not to be a downer, but to your point, like that, that actually means it's worth less. Right. In terms of inflation adjusted value. So, well, That's you know, part of the hopium guys. Sorry, DN, go on. <laughs> so so the um, the the underlying thing here, you know, there we we have all these people out there, especially like Rational Root and other people who who have all these brilliant on chain metrics about things that are happening, and they can you know uh, uh, look at how many coins have been held for this amount of time, blah blah blah. I mean, there's all there's all kinds of finely grained things that we can get through chain analysis, but one thing we cannot get is is, is really a sense of how many coins are uh you know are in lettuce hands still we we just do not know the supply of coins that remains held by people who are who 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 don't realize what they have and you know my sense is that every day uh, we've got hodlers coming in and purchasing a little bit more and locking that stuff down forever. And to me, I don't really care if the price hasn't changed this year or in two years or in three years. We are heading towards a supply shock, and when it hits, it's going to be abrupt. And until until it hits, we really have no idea what that all-important metric is of the number of coins still being held by lettuce hands. There's just no way to know. And the only way we're going to know is is one day, one day we're going to wake up and there's just not going to be any uh, cheap coins for sale. And boom, you know, we're, we're going to have uh, the Omega candle essentially that week. And, uh, you know, your guess is, is I, I would have thought that with the ETF and all these coins being, you know, bought up by big money i would have thought that it would have happened already but it clearly hasn't and uh to me it could happen next week next month next year but uh the only prediction i've ever made where bitcoin is concerned is that we are moving towards a supply shock and there's just no way of saying when it finally hits there's no way of saying it's like you're drinking a milkshake out of an opaque glass 
And there's no telling the moment when you run out of milkshake. I like that. I really like that take. You know what? You you just brought back you just brought back my option. Milkshakes are a shit coin. They might be a shit coin, but when you're a kid, they're super fun, right? Like when they're when they're done right, you know, it's like an old time milkshake. Anyways, all right. Uh, besides that, like, talking about the weekends, right? Talking about the weekends, you, you made me think of that unusual Wales account. That, no, I, I'm not saying that that account is a weekend. They might be weekends, um, but I, I feel like that account inspires a lot of fear in people uh, because they see, to your point, right? 10 BTC has just been transferred, right? This dormant 10 Bitcoin, right? From six years ago, from 13 years ago or something like that. And it's like, I got to tell you, when I see that, I, it's either my ignorance makes it so that I just don't care. I don't, to me, it's just a giant nothing burger. You know what I mean? And and this goes, the, the way that this relates to the weak hands is, is that like, who cares? Let these people sell their Bitcoin. Does doesn't matter. Like, I don't know. I just don't. I don't know. I the, the the case of the bear whale that's constantly dumping. I just don't entirely buy it. Just don't buy the the bear whale thing. I don't know. Any thoughts well, on this? Well, inevitably, there's there there are people out there with thousands of coins and who've probably lived frugally and and you know when you have thousands of coins. Uh, maybe at some point, you know, we're, we're at the point now where we're like, all it takes is four coins to get you a Maybach, you know? And if that's what, if, if you're, <laughs> if, uh, if, if you're really at the point where like, you, you know, you finally decide you're going to live a little and, and sell four of your thousand coins. Hey, that happens from time to time. There's a certain hey. number. Yeah, we don't, so we don't what know. What color how is your Maybach? What color is your Maybach, sir? <laughs> oh, uh, bright, bright pink. Yeah, I have a bright Terrible pink choice. Maybach. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, but you gosh. spend your money however you want, sir. Yeah, that's right. That's right now, I'm in a, uh, in a $16 a night hotel room in Southeast Asia. So I'm still, I, I am uh, still living like a college student who's traveling internationally. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that as Bitcoin's, as Bitcoin's uh, historical journey of, pri of, uh, price appreciation and, and value, um, you know, takes place. So nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. I own no Within chairs. <laughs> that's it. No chairs. Very nice. All right, guys, you know what? That's going to, uh, that's going to wrap up the numbers and we're going to move it on over to the fireside chat. Pleb Underground is brought to you by our newest sponsor, No Hue. Check them out at nohue.com. That's right, guys. The best Bitcoin builders in the space are coming together under one banner. Look for more people and more companies to be joining nohue.com. Proof of Ink, Stack Chain Magazine, BTC Pins, Asanoha Gold, Crypto Cloaks, and BTC Sessions are already members. Go check out what's going on at nohue.com. Welcome back, everyone, to the Fireside Chat. As you guys know, DN Comply, fellow Bitcoiner, is joining us. And he recently wrote uh, an article which um, is called Unreal Stupidity, How Kamala Harris' Capital Gains Tax Could Unravel the Economy and Usher in Authoritarianism. Now, before we dive into that article, we're just going to backtrack a bit. And um, I just want to ask you quickly, Right. Um, when did you start? When did you start writing uh, Bitcoin related content and why? Why did you start doing this? Because I also noticed you have like a Bitcoin basics website. So before we talk about this article, I just want to give the, the viewers and listeners. Right. Because there are a lot of new people, new subscribers to this channel, and they most likely did not see your, your previous show. So if we could start there first, that'd be awesome. Yeah. You know, my my background uh, when I started off uh, as a 20 something way back when, and needing to make some money, my my uh, my initial my initial career was just being a technical writer. And you know, there's a stereotype that this is like an, a fantastically boring job. But I think technical writing is uh, when it's done right. It's it's uh, you know, your writing needs to be interesting, and it, and you need to be explaining some important things to people. And that's really what good technical writing is. And um, 
as I got into Bitcoin in 2015, uh, I uh, over the next several years, I started realizing that, hey, nobody there's there, there's all these things you kind of need to know to to really get a sense of what makes Bitcoin so special. And it touches on it's a, it's a very multidisciplinary kind of thing. Uh, you know, to really understand the basics of Bitcoin, you need to know something about public key uh, encryption. You need to know something about macroeconomics. You need to know something about game theory. You need to have a, a general background in, you know, computers and programming. Like if you don't have Wait, any of do those what things. Bitcoin? To do what well, to Bitcoin, just understand yeah. how Bitcoin works, you know, there's there's like all these different components. Well, sure, I agree that, with that. Well, well, I mean, how really? If, if how would you how would you understand Bitcoin if you had no idea how public and private keys work? And, and, no, that, that, and that's one that's one thing i disagree that, that's one okay. thing you definitely do need but like the, i'm not sure you okay. need like to understand all the game theory or like all the computer science i don't think you need to understand like to, to be able to like explain why bitcoin is is useful in the world and, and helps a bunch of things yeah sure but to, to to just be a user of bitcoin i think yeah you just need to understand the, the the keys aspect um and and you know and w keys wallets addresses utxos that's it like well what about what about the uh, i mean to me the big value proposition of bitcoin has to do with its incredible scarcity versus fiat currency you know so i think a huge part of understanding bitcoin is just understanding what uh, an uh, an economic catastrophe naturally arises from from uh, uh, from fiat and uh, tied into That's that understanding is something the need that... for bitcoin rather than bitcoin itself i would argue but uh, I, I, I'm, I think maybe we're talking a little bit past each other here. I'm just saying that there's different components to Bitcoin and having some sense of, uh, each of those components can, can get, can kind of help you to grok the full picture. Like, I, I think it would be like really difficult to understand, uh, why Bitcoin makes so much sense if you had no idea what the uh, national debt was and the very and the entitlements and what a economic sinkhole the uh, the the worldwide economic system has fallen into i mean i i think that's part of the appeal to bitcoin anyway so so what i tried to do in in my uh, piece was was give you kind of a comprehensive overview of uh, of Bitcoin, if if you had known nothing about it, nothing about virtual scarcity uh, whatsoever, and um, you know that's kind of uh, what my big interest in is in in life is just kind of explaining relatively complicated things to newcomers, and. Uh, so this this new piece that I uh, that I've just come up with uh, about uh, capital gains, uh, unrealized capital gains. Uh, what what happened was uh, I was inspired to write that because uh, Kamala Harris's main economics person was on TV that week talking about how the administration, uh, the Harris administration, would be advocating for an uh, for such a tax. And uh, what I realized is that, um, you know, a lot of Bitcoiners would just take it for granted that everybody knows what what capital gains are. Everybody knows what unrealized capital gains are. But I think in reality, probably not one in 20 uh, regular non-Bitcoiners even knows how capital gains works. So what I decided to, uh, to do was um, write write a piece that just kind of explained the basics of capital gains. And, and then, you know, once you understood how capital gains worked, it introduced how unrealized capital gains would work. And I use some very simple examples of, uh, you know, how would you account for even one stock for which you needed to uh, pay unrealized capital gains? And so that was kind of the, the point of that piece, to get a newcomer to understand how that kind of regime would work 
and why it would just be just a, an accounting nightmare, let, o, let alone just fundamentally unfair to anyone to anyone who had any sort of investments at all. Now, let me ask, and and I just want to point out that yes, I, I read through the uh, I read through the article, and I found the examples that you gave were fantastic. They are incredibly simple, which is very important, right? Um, because that helps a person see something at the same, you know, like kind of at the same level. So I do appreciate that that you provided this, you know, this base example of like having a stock that you purchase for $100, you know, and then it goes to $500. And essentially, the capital gain is that $400, you know, and this is what you're being taxed on. But what I wanted to ask you was, um, firstly, is essentially, what do you think the real likelihood is of an unrealized capital gains tax and i just want to preface this we are we are an apolitical show right like the the actual like the pleb underground like we, we don't i i've said this a thousand times like I think we're not a political all, show phil no all governments are scams i don't give a shit see, no no it's a joke I said, we're not a political no, <laughs> i get it i get what you did but i'm just saying right like it's like all governments are, are ridiculous they're all about increasing their power so that being said right like regardless of which party it is or anything like that that's actually putting that into place and yes it, it seems that kamala for whatever reason is the picked cheerleader for this what do you think the likelihood is that we end up seeing an unrealized capital gains tax oh well, i think it's it's roughly the same as the likelihood uh, that franklin roosevelt would sign an executive order uh, confiscating gold i think that when uh, when the uh, economic system hits some hardcore inflection point, then uh, then anything that's not nailed down becomes fair game. And uh, I, I, I think that uh, uh, sort of the extreme uh, 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 positions taken by the federal government over the last five years in all sorts of things, uh, you know, particularly to me, the you know, I'll, I'll never be able to get out of my head uh, Joe Biden coming on TV saying that for, you know, the unvaxxed, this is going to be the winter of death and despair and doom. Oh, I mean, I totally you remember, remember that. that with the red background? Of it's course. like he, we were all you know, it was over. <laughs> yeah, it was over. And, you know, so I, I mean, I, I just think that, um, you know the the chances right now in a non-economic emergency of an of of an unrealized capital gains tax passing are nil. But uh, if 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 we hit, you know, eventually, eventually, I think we all agree we're we are going to hit a crisis because nobody's doing anything about the national debt, and it's just going to keep going the way it's going, and one day. Uh, the moment of crisis will arise, the whole gradually then suddenly thing. And we're going to be in the thick of a financial meltdown. And uh, and at that point, you know, the Kamala Harris's of the world uh, are, are going, if they have power, that's, they're going to initiate something, either that or something equally draconian. It just scares the hell out of me because I, I th there's a tweet that, here, I'll just pull it up, make it easy for people. There's a tweet that that you referenced here um, in particular, right? So, you know, did my example of the Apple stock seem too convoluted? And here's a tweet here from Emma Jo Morris. If someone bought a house 10 years ago for $250,000 and they still own it and it's now gone up to 700 k in worth. Kamala Harris wants to tax that even though they don't actually have the liquid cash because... Wait, you guys, pay, you guys pay capital so, gains on your primary residencies? No. You do, you do so not. But, double but fake news or thing. like? No, but, th but that's the thing. You know, well, it, it's not real, right? Like, this is a hypothetical scenario, and this is kind of what's freaky. Right? Actually, it's not because you guys pay, uh, like, what's it called? Uh, your property taxes are like wealth yes, taxes. We do so, you guys actually tax. do pay unrealized capital gains, but you only pay it on the marginal increase rather than on the whole property. So, actually, sorry, it's, guys, you it's Americans, framed. right? It, it's framed yeah. as paying for like services, you know, municipal services and stuff like that. Walton, it's all about the framing, right? It's a, anyway. <laughs> Anyways, uh, but um, damn it. Yeah, what I was going to say was this, right? So um, in that example, 
Um, how the hell does somebody pay that though, right? Like you essentially have to sell your house in order to pay the unrealized, but then it becomes like, th this just seems insane. So I, I guess um, the, the point I'm trying to make is, is that I, I just, I think that this is much more of like, because I've seen this before from governments, right? They they put out a very extreme uh, type of demand, right? Or some type of a legislation proposal. And then the other party kind of walks it back, you know, to something much more acceptable. But in the end, we've taken one step closer to the thing we don't want. And because I, I just don't see this as being real. <laughs> I, I don't get it. Like, well, I, you know, something Everyone will just be all, broke as, instantly. <laughs> as, as long as there is a, as long as the federal government continues to exist at some, at some point, there is going to be just a massive economic crisis and then the confiscation will begin. And whether that confiscation is accomplished by way of unrealized capital gains or whether that confiscation is going to come through the uh, another executive order confiscating gold, or there's there's you know there's that's the thing about stealing. There's always there's always a hundred different ways to steal and a hundred different types of things you can steal. So it's kind of predicting what what's going to get stolen and how it will be stolen is a bit of a fool's errand. But I, I would put uh, unrealized capital gains definitely high up on the list of things that could happen. Now, the, you know, the nightmare of unrealized capital gains, though, is that, um, you know, just to just to give you an example, like there there was um, an investment I I was making for my family at one point, and it was uh, it, it was in a um, it was in a plain vanilla ETF. But that ETF, I, I forget what kind of form it generated, but every year um, filing taxes, I had to wait around for, I think, a 10K form just from this one particular ETF. So every every year that I owned this ETF, uh, just by virtue of having, having this one holding for my family, um, I had to uh, file for a tax extension to wait for this damn form to come uh, every year. And, um, eventually, I mean, this ETF was just performing wonderfully and we made a significant amount of money from it, but eventually I just sold that thing because I was sick of having to, uh, file for an extension on, on my family's taxes every year. And in the same way, um, in, in my, um, in my piece, I, I give an, I, I give a very simplified example of what it would be like if you just owned one stock and had unrealized capital gains. And what you quickly realize is that even for one stock and round numbers over a 10 year period, you have a headache every year to deal with this stupid thing. And then, um, you know, the problem is that, uh, you know, like, you compare that to what we have now. If 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 you go out today and buy Apple computer and you hold it for ten years, you don't have to do any tax treatment of it all at all. But if in ten years you sell it, then you take your capital gains and you. Mm -hmm. It's a one time thing, and it's relative. You know, it's as easy as could be. Whereas if you if you were to have now, I gave a really simplified example, and you could see what a pain in the butt it would be to account for this crap. And then I said, hey, now imagine if instead of owning you know, one stock, you owned 20. And the, what, what you very quickly realize is that um, I think for a great many people, and certainly that those people would include me, I would not have the time or willingness to account for all this. And, and so I would just get out of investing in stocks because I wouldn't have uh, I wouldn't have the time to do the accounting. I wouldn't have the energy you to buy do the a accounting. Fund, right? Yeah, I would just I would just I was would just ditch that whole entire form of, invest in, of investing. And then you'd have to say, well, then what happens to the stock market 
when uh, when uh, Main Street can no longer purchase stocks because the uh, accounting treatment is just too arduous. Yeah, I again, right? It's like as we continue to go, as we continue to discuss this, I'm just it. It seems like such a. It just seems like such a crippling move, in or you know, to to do this, because it would completely. I mean, let's be honest, right? Wall Street is. The bankers, right? Wall Street is the the country's like lifeblood of money. So the reality is is that um, somebody putting through and enacting legis legislation that is this harsh, I I don't know. I don't see the uh, I don't see the bankers, you know, that essentially wag the government. I I don't see them supporting this. This this seems well, they, so. They certainly because... they certainly would not. Yeah. But uh, you know, when we're talking about an economic emergency and uh, ah, yes, push comes, course, right? that, the greater good. That's when push comes to shove. They're going to get that money somehow, and uh, uh, I don't uh, I don't give Harris much credit for anything, but I think I think she was sincerely tipping her hand about how she wants to move forward to raise money for the government. And uh, I mean, why else, why else should, would she be bringing this up in the first place? I mean, certainly not making her po popular to the investment community. So why bring it up at all? I, I think the answer to that is because she's serious. Yeah, I think that's a good point. Um, I, Okay, part of it, I think she's serious. Part of it is, is that I, I truly believe that like all, all presidents just have handlers. So she's yeah. just, you know, <laughs> she's just doing what she's got to do to grind out that paycheck. And, and you know, for whatever reason, ignorance is bliss. You know, either this person knows and lives in complete denial or they are indeed completely ignorant of the terrible idea that they're putting through in relation to this. I I don't know. You know, like I, I never know it, it's, but I do think it's frightening. I, I really do. Anyway, because... just, hmm? yeah, just to, just to tie this up in a bow, the, the, the whole reason I wrote this thing is because, uh, I felt that not one in 20 people understand capital gains to begin with. Most people don't have any money in the stock market at all. And I think that uh, at the very least, we need to start educating people about this basic financial literacy of what are capital gains in the first place. And even if you never invest in the stock market, you can see once you understand plain vanilla capital gains, you're then in a, in a position to understand why unrealized capital gains would just be pernicious for any kind of functioning economic system. Now, very well said. And um, the way that you finished the article, you, you were essentially explaining um, that nobody, that, that that's the headline, right? Nobody is paying attention. Now, I, this is something I have always wondered, okay? And I'm pretty sure that the only- Sorry, what, what did you say, Phil? I'm sorry? No, I was what, saying I that catch... nobody's paying attention. He did it again. Hey, this guy. Yeah. This guy. <laughs> uh, so so this is the thing right like why is nobody paying attention right like what what is it is it that it's too complicated because i i honestly believe you ever see the way people's eyes glass over when you start explaining money right when you start explaining how the money is fake how the government just issues money out of thin air even though we pretend that this whole um the, 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 this whole uh process of you know, creating bonds and then buying those bonds and reselling those bonds and then poof, money appears, you know, the, the mandrake mechanism, so to speak. You, you just see people's eyes glass over. Why does nobody care? Is it too complicated? Is that the problem? Or is it just that people don't have time and they just want to exist in their little bubbles and, you know, just, just kind of let me watch my TV and let me have my, my car and, you know, let me have my, my, my smartphone, like, what do you, what do you think it is? Like, what is going to take people to start paying attention? Well, I think at the very start of that, until you, until you have like a more than surface level understanding of what money is, 
and where it comes from, you're not even equipped to start entertaining how the economic system works or any of this stuff. And so having, uh, I, I think that's the kind of the wonderful thing. One of the many wonderful things about Bitcoin is that to begin to, e to even begin to understand Bitcoin, you have to start understanding money in the first place. And, uh, you, you know, I think, I think the reality is that uh, the vast majority of people just have never really given the matter any thought. They don't know what infuses this uh, piece of paper with the value of $20. They, they think they, they, I, I really believe that they think there's something magical in the paper itself that they, that they, they can just print this paper and that this carries so much, so much uh, monetary value in it. They, they don't, they, in not, in not thinking about how money what money is in the first place and not thinking carefully about it you 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 you're you're just not you're you're just left out of any kind of uh of uh ability to understand what's going on in terms of how the economy functions and and you basically are rendered into uh, being a non-playable character in your own economic system yeah very well said Bankers, bankers are magicians, and fiat is the rabbit that they pulled from their hat. It's absolutely, absolutely remarkable. Okay, so we're going to wrap up the segment here. But before we do, before we do, DN Comply, how can people find you? What is the best way to find you? And guys, we are going to put links uh, to everything relevant in the show notes so you could find DN Comply on Twitter, and you can also go check out all of his writings. So where can they find you? Well, I, I have the website DN, as in do not comply. Mm -hmm. uh, DNComply.com uh, is, is my website. And the website links to my uh, Twitter account, my Noster account, and my various, uh, and my two articles. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm always, uh, I, I guess if I have any hope at all, uh, Clearly, the most important thing I've written in terms of uh, my contribution to the Bitcoin community is my Bitcoin basics piece. And even if you uh, are a longtime hodler, I hope you'll give it a look because I think that uh, uh, it's basically a one hour read that starts from zero and and really gives somebody a good working knowledge of Bitcoin and what it is and why you need to avoid shit coins and all that stuff. Um, and my hope is that uh, you'll give it a read and, and maybe it will become your default recommendation when talking to newbies. Very nice. Very nice. All right, guys, that is going to be added to the show notes. DN comply. Absolutely awesome. That's going to wrap up the fireside chat and we're going to move it on over to wrecked. wrecked the pleb underground is brought to you by thunder funder check it out thunderfunder.com thunder funder is a funding portal registered with the sec and a member of finra their mission is to provide retail investors access to investments while supporting the growth of open source projects they love bitcoin check out their shit coins that's thunder funder Dot com. Correct. Uh, this week, of course, uh, still swan mining. Um, if you would, if you would like to see more uh, discussion on swan mining being wrecked, please see our live show that was recorded uh, and is available on YouTube and uh, perhaps other platforms. Uh, uh, if you go to the Pleb Underground channel, where you can see me, uh, Phil, humble, and Ulrich discussing swan and uh, the the various incompetencies. Um, um, but, uh, talking of incompetencies and talking of humble, uh, this week, I'm um, sorry, humble, you're not going to like this, but uh -oh. like the, what, what I, I'm, I'm, I, I don't even have, I'm, I'm not usually someone who's lost for words. And yet I, I was, uh, I was lost for words when I, when I saw this travesty, uh, please give me one moment. I'm going to try and try and share, share what I saw. Cause I, I'm still, yeah, still in shock. Let me go. 
Okay, so clearly there's some like good ham on, on this pizza and I, I'm a fan of red onion. It looks like some good quality cheese. Maybe I can see some like balsamic onions. I, all for this. Great idea. Uh, and I know the whole like Satoshi thing about uh, jalapenos and and pineapple on pizza is actually fake. It's, that's not, that's 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 bogus. So if you think that um, that's, that's Satoshi's pizza choice, you are, you are misinformed people. But humble apple whilst fantastic and like good in, in in other food substances should does not belong on a pizza i'm sorry like this is wow, you're apple. you are wrecking I, I don't know the the people who are who are having to eat apple on pizza that's hey, it that's it that's I, all i've got for wrecked uh yeah humbles pizza humbles pizza huh i i, I yep. gotta tell I, I gotta tell you man um never really thought of apple on pizza i i mean i am a it's going to shake sound terrible. Coin. People, people coin. are going to hate me for this, but I am a pineapple on pizza person. I, I do think that that tastes great. I, and I, I'm but, happy with it, but it's not my first choice. Like, no, I, it's not I, my first you know, choice, but I, I'll do it, right? But the, the rest apple? of it is pretty good. Like, you know, like to me, like, you want to have like a couple of meats and then maybe a couple other things. Like, we, yeah. Huh. I don't know. DN comply. Are you, uh, what, what do you think? You think you'd be an apple on pizza enjoyer? Absolutely not. I think the Italians have it. Right. I think that, uh, yeah. you know, when you go to Italy, it's really it's really only the Americans who put cheese on uh, who who think that pizza must have cheese. And when you go to uh, Rome uh, and you go to these pizzerias, they, the, a lot of them will have like six or eight different varieties that you can get a slice of right there. And like half of the pizzas don't have cheese at all, even if they do have meat. Uh, and uh, it's just uh, sounds I, I think friendly, Phil. I think they're yeah, exactly. I think their sensibilities about what belongs and what does not belong on pizza are pretty pretty on point. And I will give a shout out to uh, the Florida pizza in um, in Rome. There's a pizza a pizzeria called Pizzeria Florida or Florida Pizza. That sounds like a shit coin. Sounds like world. an American tourist trap. I see where it's going. It is the best pizza in the universe. It's only a coincidence that the name happens to have Florida in it. It has nothing to do with the uh It's not great owned by the rapper, Florida. is it? No, no. Anyway, uh but yeah, all I can say is I will defer to the Italians when it comes to what belongs on a pizza. I can appreciate and respect that. So guys, look, as Walton alluded to, if you did not see this week's live episode of Pleb Underground, where then you were also to... wrecked. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. You also wrecked. But about the Swan allegations, definitely check it out. That that was um, definitely an eye opening conversations. And somehow Diddy made it into that conversation, uh, which thank you, Walton. I don't, <laughs> I don't even know how that happened, but it did. Uh, I, but, I, I yeah. don't know. He used a lot of lube. <laughs> where's all the oil gone nobody knows okay anyways guys that is gonna do it for wrecked and we are gonna move it on over to the hopium the hopium pleb underground is brought to you by cypher safe check them out at cyphersafe.io guys you know that i am a pet rock enjoyer and this is the Pet Rock for Bitcoiners. That's right. The Bitcoin Relo Triangle, 16 ounces of solid titanium. Check it out at cyphersafe.io and look for new products that are going to be coming out very soon at cyphersafe.io. For the Hopium this week, I've got two things, two things that we're looking at. The first thing, Nunchuck. Introducing decoy wallet. Now, usually we have Hopium where we just debunk a bunch of it and we're like, yeah, no, this is really just garbage that's trying to make you feel things. But in all fairness, Nunchuck is, and I thank Walton all the time for. I'm so proud. I'm so yeah. proud right now. I love it. I've got other people. I've got people coming back to me, and you're not the only one being like, yeah. So I wasn't. I wasn't sure about Nunchuck, but actually, it's fucking awesome. Yeah, it is the best. It, it really like in terms of like. I didn't think that it was going to become my go-to hot wallet until I used it. And I'm like, this is just absolutely brilliant. And these guys are, if you ask me, totally low key. And they are just, these, they are creating desirable user experiences. They don't sponsor the show, um, but I, I can't help but, but shill uh, 
uh, nunchuck. So yeah, I like this decoy wallet. I like what they're doing. Um, I, I like that they're marrying the 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 user experience with security, right? Like you can use nunchuck with the tap signer, which Walton got me, which I use, which I love. So yeah. I know I'm a cheerleader. I'm sorry. Everyone can make fun of me. And be I like, think oh, I just oh, feel like multi sig is what is is where is where it, like it's just so easy to set up multi sig with I, nunchuck. It, like and it makes sense. It makes if everything if you if you find multi sig confusing, tr try and play around with multi sig on yeah. nunchuck and uh, like that's a g I don't know. I, I, it's it's yeah. It's self sovereign. You can connect it to your own node. Slightly more challenging step, but like it, that that's possible if you want more privacy. DN comply. Have we sold you on Nunchuck right there? It Maybe it wrong. looks like it 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 certainly even from what you've said, and uh I'd actually never heard of this thing until right now, but man, it looks slick as uh, slick as can be. Slick as uh, baby oil for our theme of the week. <laughs> iOS and Android compatible. Okay, so it's I, I'm telling you, it's totally worth checking. And they don't out. need dependencies. They built everything themselves. They built yeah. all their libraries. Yeah. Wow. And, it's, wow. and it works with NFC, anyways. The, it's it's really remarkable what they're doing. And and not only that, okay, but check this out. Um, it also works with the 21 hardware wallet device. Sorry, the sign the signing device. Okay, and that I also thought was cool. They are one of the first wallets to uh, to support the uh, the 21 hardware wallet uh, device. Anyways, pretty cool stuff. Awesome. And this stuff, thing dude. self powers. Okay. All right. I'm done. I'm done. Yeah, being, I know. It's so I'm cool. done being a salesman. All right. I'm done. Okay. Let's go. Let's move on here. We're gonna move on to the uh, the last piece. Th this one. This one is the the hopium that is causing the most controversy. It just dropped. Here we go. Every bull cycle. Every bull cycle brings the bullshit. Here we go. Documentary to air next Tuesday on HBO that claims to reveal the identity of Satoshi Nakamoto. The doc is by Cullen Hoback, creator of the Q Into the Storm series that I did see, uh, that exposes the authors of QAnon conspiracy theory. That's right. Mystery creator of Bitcoin identified. Identified, guys. So here we go again. Now. There was a trailer. I will put the trailer in the show notes for the people who want to see the link to it, who haven't seen it yet. Um, not see the link to it, but see the trailer. Yeah, I talk like an idiot. Um, but in the trailer, they showed a lot of Samson Mao. I know Walton likes to call him Scamson Mao, uh, but they show a lot of Scamson Mao, and they show a lot of Adam back. Okay, and they show a couple of shots of, of Roger Ver. Not going to lie. And now I did see a tweet today, right? A, a tweet that was deleted from Cullen where he, I don't know if he responded or retweeted something that, um, you know, the, the best fake Satoshi ever, uh, Craig Wright, asked mm -hmm. about talking about this. So. All right. So. I got insider knowledge on this. Okay. It's going okay, go, to go, blow go. your mind. Scams and Mao. Scams and Mao has uh, tried to hire people uh, to just get him into Hollywood films. Samson Mao wants to just I, be like a like a, a star. Ask. And it's like, bro, come on. Like, I, I was going to ask. You've got loads of money, but you couldn't even hold down the girl against her PT. Like, you, you really think you want to go play with Hollywood baddies, bro? Like, you're going to get just, you're gonna get wrecked. But like, <sighs> just, I don't know. Like, Finish that NFT game that you were telling people you were going to make. I don't know. Like, what, help more, help more states, help more countries, help more governments adopt Bitcoin. Oh, it seems like you've got important work to be doing other than Hollywood films, sir. So this brings up the next question, right? Um, because as soon as I saw this, we know that HBO doesn't produce their own content. It's other content producers that produce it, right? Um, so the question is, who paid to have this produced? So I'm guessing based on what you said, you're hinting at maybe, do you think that Blockstream paid to have this documentary oh, no, I don't. I don't think that's true, no? but I do know okay. that, 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 that Samson spoke to someone and said, hey, you know people in Hollywood, and the guy's like, uh, not so. not really like a couple but not you know not really in the sam's like yeah but can you get me in this movie and he's, what he's like what do you what do you mean he's like you know to be like a to have a, a, a part in the movie. and i don't want to just be an extra i want like lines that was the you know the, the conversation it's like you're not you're not like tiger woods or or you know you know you don't have you're not like some like elite 
athlete in your field with like a marketable presence, right? Like you, you don't have companies approaching you being like, Hey, we like your vibe. We want to, we want to use you to like, you, you're not at that level where, where, where people write you into movies. Like, come on. Walton really now, brings the fucking, he, he just, Adam totally Back might be kind of a bit of Satoshi and like, you know, but then <sighs> you, 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 if, if, if Adam's got lines in the film, like, I, I hope they're short ones. Look, all, all I can say, all I can say is this, right? Um, I think that this is good for Bitcoin. <laughs> I don't know. DN comply. Did you happen to see anything about this besides us just showing this? I I, I had um I, I had caught it on Twitter a little bit, but my my general intuition with this is uh you know, let's let's say that the three of us have uh you know, can cobble together 50, 100,000 bucks to produce some shitty Bitcoin documentary that we have hopes of selling to HBO and or our documentary is a piece of crap that we've just hurriedly thrown together, but we really want to get this thing sold and we want to establish an audience for it. And let's say that we have no scruples whatsoever. What's the easiest way to get attention for our piece of crap Bitcoin documentary and make sure that it uh, gets widespread media attention? Oh, I know. Let's just say that we've unmasked Satoshi and we know who it is. Boom. You know, now we have uh, a documentary that is guaranteed to uh, get some traction, get lots of people talking about it, blah, blah, blah. But it's still, at the end of the day, it's still a piece of shit documentary. And shame on us for having no scruples to be willing to trot something like that out when, uh, you know, I think we can say Satoshi is uh, probably about 30 times smarter than any of us. And, uh, uh, nobody's unmasked him to date, and what's uh, what are the odds that we've been able to do it? I say between slim and none. Can I, I can appreciate can that? I one more point, Phil. Sure. I, I, which which is, and I'm going to just share this this chart to like help me make my point. Right? There are different people um, in the Bitcoin space, and that basically everyone falls into these into these different groups, right? Um, and it's 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 like their contribution to Bitcoin. I think a lot of people think they're trying to do good or trying to help Bitcoin, but like, where are they actually? I've talked before about how I think David Bailey is is chaotic neutral. He, he's he's trying to do as much advancement of Bitcoin. Uh, um, he's trying to get Bitcoin in as as many in front of as many eyes as possible in any way as possible as fast as possible. Um, and and what else happens? Yeah. I think when it comes to, I could agree with that. I could agree with that. I think when it comes to Adam and and Samson, I feel like that they're, they're mostly in this uh, lawful good or or or, or, or lawful, lawful neutral. neutral category. To me, to yeah. me, Adam is is lawful good, and Samson is lawful neutral. They 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 might think of themselves as cypherpunks, but I think like. Blockstream and these guys are some of the most like regulated, heavy, compliant kind of Bitcoiners that exist. Uh, but I don't think of them as like especially competent. They're not. They're not making Bitcoin sexy again. Like tether T-shirts aren't cool. Like, the, what do you mean? They, they they don't have marketing. Blockstream Blockstream has has been a is, is a company that has forever had a marketing problem. Um. <sighs> I don't know. Samsung's not not even there anymore, right? But the, the, the these guys aren't the people that that the, these guys aren't the people that are cool enough to be like, hey, you want some lines in this really cool film? I, I can't disagree with that. I, I'm just look. I, I can say this, right? As long as we don't, as long as we don't see any Bitcoiners, I guess, showing up to the next. Uh, the future Diddy parties, because of course, right? It won't be a Diddy party. It'll be the next guy that comes up and does the weird shit. Uh, so it'll be whoever's party. As long as we don't see the Bitcoiners there, I think we're... It's the Scott okay. guy from Fortress, right? It's, it's his parties, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's Who's going party. to his parties? Fortress. <laughs> oh, you can make God, a yeah. clip on this, maybe, Phil. That guy Phil. disappeared. Yeah? Yeah? That guy yeah? disappeared. A little clip on this. Yeah, maybe. 
Oh, oh, look at this man. He's on fire today. All right, guys. All right, guys. That's right. That's right. This is this is gonna do hopium. All right. We're gonna wrap up hopium. And this also wraps up the weekly episode of Pleb Underground. Before we go, before we go, DM comply one more time. How can the viewers find you? And listeners, viewers and listeners. Well, I'm at DN, as in do not, DN comply on uh, Twitter. I have a, a, a Noster feed as well. And of course, the easiest way to find all my stuff is at dncomply.com. And uh, gosh, what a pleasure to be back on your show. I, I love what you guys do. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And we definitely look forward to having you on again. Guys, this is going to wrap up this episode. Don't forget to check us out on our audio-only platforms, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Anchor. If you want to stream a sat and actually get sats for listening to us, right? Check us out on fountain.fm. Walton, how do we end this? Fuckshitcoins.com. Please like and subscribe. We will see you next week. Then the most toxic pick on Maxi ever. They said he's more toxic. What? More toxic than the most.